Donald Soltz, who served as an Army captain in Iraq in 2003, and now, of course, is the chairman of VoteVets.org. John, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks so much for having me, sir. Well, uh, shouldn't that be it? I mean, General McChrystal <laughs> says they, the Al-Qaeda and Iraq organization may be irreversibly crippled. Shouldn't, shouldn't uh, troops be boarding planes right now? Uh, that would be great if it was, but it's just not what this war is about. This is, you know, McChrystal should be, should be careful because obviously the statements that you had in the lead-in about uh, mission accomplished are an issue. But he's got to be careful now. He's the head of the Special Operations Command. Admiral Fallon's the head of Central Command. He controls the real war against al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and obviously the war in Iraq. And, and General uh, McChrystal's said statements here that the White House can exploit for political gain because they have a political strategy. And Admiral Fallon, I think, is very concerned about uh, statements he makes being used for partisan political efforts in D.C. because the president here has not outlined a military strategy to win. He's outlined a political strategy not to lose. So they will exploit this for political gain. Do the uh, let's, let's do the ear to the ground test that we always do. Do the claims of progress against this group in Iraq match up with what you've been hearing anecdotally from from men and women on the ground? Do they believe things are getting better against this particular group? Depends on where you are in Iraq. Where you sit is where you stand. If, if you're serving in Anbar now and you served in Anbar two years ago in Fallujah, there might be less uh, combat on your street. Uh, but, like, I've got a really good friend right now who's a platoon leader in the 1st Cavalry Division north of Iraq in Diyala, and they've got better IEDs or these EFPs up in their sector now. They've got more car bombs, more suicide bombs. So the enemy likes to, to metastasize to where our army isn't, uh, which is now in Diyala province in northern Iraq. So the situation isn't necessarily better on the ground, but most importantly, the political situation isn't better. And this is really about a Shia state that's created inside of Iraq and a larger Shia revival across the Middle East. So uh, our goals have not been met by the surge because we have no political record. Yeah, and, and these are encouraging numbers and, uh, regarding casualties, but they haven't hit zero. 66 Americans in uniform were killed in Iraq in September. It was 84 in August. And if al-Qaeda in Iraq is not killing them, if we have neutralized them or even close to it, who is killing them? Are not most of the dead and wounded in Iraq the result of this civil conflict? Well, we have a real issue in southern Iraq now. The real issue with the Iraq war and the real fourth phase of the war is this proxy war that we're having, in a sense, with Iran. Iranian influence is tremendous in Iraq. Iraq was like a cork in, that was holding the, Iran in place. And when we remove Saddam, now Iran's influence is much greater. He's invested, uh, Iran has invested in the Shia militias in the south, uh, the Mahdi army and the Badr Corps. Uh, so the Americans are not only caught between Shia and Shia violence, but they're caught between Shia and Sunni violence, and they're caught between Sunni and American violence. So it's coming from all over. But, you know, casualties go up and down. The bottom line here is that we have no political progress, and al-Qaeda is stronger today than it was six years ago, and bin Laden's on the loose in Afghanistan, and al-Qaeda in Iraq, the brand itself, it wasn't there before the war started. Mm -hmm. And we have a situation where the Sunni insurgents in the beginning of the war wanted that name, but they have no real relationship with bin Laden because they wanted the stature in our administration seized on that because our administration wants an, to create an excuse to link 9-11 to Iraq. And John, you mentioned the political possibilities for the White House in these, in these statements from, from General McChrystal. Are there, in fact, political opportunities for those who are against the war? Cannot somebody say something at this point, as I asked Dana Milbank? I think that's a great idea. I'm, uh, I'll say, hey, you know, Larry Craig might be using your stuff. I'm going to start using your stuff because okay. I think it's a great argument uh, I, to, to use tomorrow morning. We won. Time to go home. Ta that's their plan. Hey. Their plan is to say that they won. So they can turn focus to Iran, so they can consolidate. They want to unite this country behind a war with Iran to help Republican gains next year. It's a very dangerous political strategy and has nothing to do with military success on the ground. That's right. The emphasis in that sentence is come home. John Soltz of VoteVets.org. Great thanks as always, John. Appreciate it. Injecting those.